Hello, my name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software. When we start talking about provisioning non-production environments, one of the big issues we have is, is that we cannot let data out the door that is private. And one of the most private bits of information is where I live. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm publicly listed. You guys can probably track me down pretty easily. That's not the question. The question is, is what if I'm not? What if I, I, that information is private and, and I don't want it exposed? And, you know, you're dealing with stuff like, you know, the new California Privacy and Protection Act. You're dealing with the GDPR. You know, you're dealing with all these different mechanisms, HIPAA, FERPA, who knows, that are going to make sure that you can't expose uh, production information in non-production environments, depending on the type of information. And location, you know, my address, my zip code, and all that fun stuff is very much private depending on how you define it. So, you've got to mask it, right? If we want to do production size data in a non-production environment, then we still need to retain the data. But how could we do this in a way that gets us a, a, a roughly the same distribution, that we see the same types of data distributed in the same ways, but we completely mask the individuals that that information is tied to? Redgate Software's got a cool tool called SQL Data Masker, and I'm going to show you in this video how SQL Data Masker can take your data and your data distributions and use your data and your data distributions in a completely automated fashion that will allow you to mask your data but still maintain your data distributions. <gasps> cool trick, right? Let's go check it out. So this is Redgate Data Masker for SQL Server. And what I've got here is a very simple setup for dealing with addresses inside the AdventureWorks database. Now, every data structure is going to have different tricks and traps and stuff that you have to do that are going to change the way you would set things up. This is not how I would do this on, on another system or on another database. But on AdventureWorks, if I want to mask address information, there's actually a really easy way to do it. All I have to do is rearrange the addresses based on postal code. If I just mix everything up on postal code and don't do anything else, because of the referential integrity and all the rest of the stuff going on, I can actually hide all of the addresses such that you will not show up under my under your own address. Even if uh, even if we keep your personal data in here, your address is going to change, guaranteed. Because all I have to do is shuffle the data in place based on address. Let's go ahead and open up that rule just so you can see how easy it is to set up. And you can see right here we've got it. Let's go ahead and put it right front and center. And all I've done is just say, here's the column I want you to shuffle, and I want you to shuffle postal code. Now, it's got all the other columns are available, but it's just going to rearrange all the rows based on postal code. It will rearrange where postal code is, but, will, but that's all it's going to do. It's not changing any of the IDs on any of the other columns. But there's a couple of tricks that I've done here. Now, the first thing let me show you is this command statement. Now, in this command statement, what I've done is really simple. I basically said, set up a, a postal code or a zip stage database and set up a city database based on postal code. So that way, what I'm doing is, is I'm going to rearrange the postal codes, right? That's going to happen. So let's just, let's just assume that happens. But then what I'm doing is I'm taking those same postal codes and I'm capturing the states that are connected to them and I'm capturing the cities that are connected to them so that after the postal codes get rearranged, I can use these values to ensure that my data still looks real. So that the postal code for, say, um, Beverly Hills 90210 is still going to be Beverly Hills and it's still going to be in California at the end of this process. So that's what we've done here is we've set up these tables. Um, move the data into them. We then shuffle the postal codes. I then do simple substitution rules on my database. And basically what I'm going for here, let me move this down so you can see it, 
is I've got address line one, address line two, and I'm filling in street addresses for all of them. And the where clause is, is that it's where it's not null or empty. If, if there's no value, I don't need to substitute a value because there's nothing there. But if there is a value, I'm going to substitute it to ensure that I've got um, you know properly masked data. And then I'm going to do use table to table. Let's go ahead and pull that up. And basically, based on the state province ID, I'm going to map across my postal code. Now, one thing I could do to speed things up is I could put an index on postal code on the address table, but I didn't want to modify my existing tables in any way. Um, it is something that I could do to, to, to speed things up, but in this case, I'm not going to. Um, and then the, the next thing is city stage, and it's the same idea. I'm based on the city. Um, make sure the postal code values match. And so it just very, very quickly moves around the columns exactly as we need it to move them around and gets us to where we need to get. Now, the one thing I will note is that you see how each of these things is, is below the other. And what's going on is, is that this must complete before this one completes. This must complete before this one completes because these are nested values. They actually have to get done in the correct order. Otherwise, I'm going to run into um, data issues because if it's if it's trying to mix um, and shuffle the zip, uh, uh, the, the postal code information at the same time as I'm trying to use postal code information to update other columns, it causes actual problems. So I've made sure that I've nested these things so they occur one after the another. And then finally, um, I've got it so it drops the um, uh, um, staging tables. So it cleans those out and off it goes. Let's run this. Yes, run the rules now. All right, and let's go over to rule statistics so you can see it running. And so you notice that it's completing each one in stage. So the command is completed. Then the shuffle is running. So it's shuffling each of the data sets um, one after another. And you can see the number of rows that have been processed is now up to you know, the 1900. And now it's running you know, the substitution so that it's, it's replacing all the address one, address line two, you know, as outlined. Um, that should finish shortly, usually fairly quick. My VM is starting to run slower for some reason. Because in testing, this all finished in just over a minute. Let's go. Let me speed this a bit up. There, that's complete. Now the table to table is running to make sure that I've got all the city information and the state information mapped appropriately to my now moved postal code information. Yet it still maintains referential integrity across them. At this point, I'm going to speed up. And now that's done. So you can see that I can actually get to the point where I've got realistic address data, yet I've hidden that data away. So the postal codes are still acting the same way as they did before. I've got them connected to the city. I've got them connected to the state, yet my everything is completely masked in such a way that you cannot connect an individual to their original address. They're going to be connected to some new address, and the address, the street address, is actually going to be different even than, than it was before. So we've masked all our data, yet our data is still functional as addresses. So as you can see, that just uses your data. So it's not we're not producing new data. We're not finding other data sources. We're using your data to drive the data masking. We're still masking the data. We're still hiding the data from people who are not supposed to be exposed. We're still protecting the people who need to be protected. But we're using your data in a way that allows that data to look and act as if it were real, even though we've hidden all of the actual functionality from... Or, sorry. It allows that data to look real, even though we've ensured that it's masked from the original owners 
uh, so that there's no chance that it's connected up, but we've got it all divided down so that you can see a distribution that looks like your production environment. It's a big trick. It's a cool thing to know. Anyway, please subscribe. There's lots more information like this coming. If you subscribe, you can keep up to date on what's coming out, and um, then you'll see all the videos as they become available. Thanks a lot. My name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.